chromosomes and mitosis, or how does DNA get from cell to the two daughter cells it forms? Define DNA, chromosome, genotype, phenotype, gene, allele, mitosis, and cytokinesis. Be able to differentiate between a gene and an allele. Relate genotype to phenotype, and be able to list and define the phases of mitosis. DNA is a simple molecule. Okay, not really. But DNA is an interesting molecule in the form of a double helix. So what we can see here is that there are four potential nucleotides, um, adenosine, thymine, guanosine, and cytosine, or A, T, G, and C, and these pair up with one another across this double helix. There's a backbone made of phosphates and sugars that aids in the stability of this molecule. There's a way that DNA can replicate, but we're not really going to touch that in this course. Look at that G, T, A, and C. You see that there is a series of these, and how that series looks in what order they are is a code, and that code is the genetic code for the organism and for all proteins within that organism. DNA is packed into things called chromosomes because the DNA in itself, it's a lot. There is a lot of DNA, and to have it packed in an efficient manner is necessary for the cell to keep things organized, as well as for the cell to be able to divide this DNA and then provide it to the two daughter cells that will result from mitosis. So we can see that there are two chromatids here in this replicated chromosome. A chromatid is going to be half of a chromosome when that chromosome is ready for division. During normal situations, when the, cro when the cell is not dividing, you'll just have a chromosome and it won't have two chromatids. It'll just be that one thing there. So we have 23 chromosome types. So here you can see those chromosomes. They are not linked to each other because those are not chromatids. Those are not chromosomes with chromatids. Those are pairs of chromosomes. You get one from your mother and one from your father. So you get 23 chromosomes from each parent meaning there are 46 chromosomes total. Chromosomes will have genes on them encoded in the DNA code. So each one of your cells is going to have 46 chromosomes, 23 from your mother and 23 from your father. So how do we get these from one to another? Well, first off, let's cover a few terms. And these terms are necessary to understand how, uh, how DNA really works. So a gene is a segment of DNA that codes for a protein. Remember the proteins way back when? All those things that are in the membrane and working around the cell? Yep, those are all coded for by genes. An allele is a variant of a gene. So you may think of people who have curly hair or straight hair. Uh, those are the proteins keratin. So keratin is uh, what is in your hair. And different types of sulfide binding in keratin make your hair curly or straight. And those are the alleles for naturally curly or naturally straight hair. The combination of alleles an individual has is the genotype. And the protein that is expressed from these genes ends up giving a phenotype, which is what you see. The genotype is what you code for. The phenotype is what you see. The genome is the sum total of all genes in a cell. As a cell said, every cell has all 23 chromosome types, and that means 46 chromosomes. You notice I say every non-reproductive cell because we're going to talk in another lecture about gametes. Sperm and eggs actually only have 23 chromosomes, which makes sense when you think about inheritance. Mitosis is a process that ensures all cells get the whole genome. So, Let's look at a cell and a cell uh, cycle. Basically, a cell has a lifetime. You have mitosis here in M. And at the end of mitosis, there are going to be two new cells made from each parent cell. So each of those new cells will then go through a phase called G1. G1 just means growth. And this is the cell as it grows and does its normal life. Not all cells will need to divide, but if you're thinking of cells that do need to divide and frequently, such as those in the epithelium, they are going to go through another phase called S. What happens is the cell goes through G1 and meets a checkpoint that then says, do, does this cell need to divide? And the answer will come back, yes, this cell needs to divide, so it'll progress into the S phase. 
The S phase is S for synthesis, during which it'll make new DNA. Each one of those chromosomes will make two chromatids during the S phase. So you will have 46 chromosomes, which means you're going to have 92 chromatids, and they are linked up in 46 chromosomes. Then you have a G2 phase, which is growth part two, and that will make the cell get larger so it can divide. After the end of G2, there'll be another checkpoint, and then the cell will go through mitosis, where it will divide up the chromosomes, and cytokinesis, where it will divide up the cytoplasm. Let's look at the phases of mitosis. Interphase is not a phase of mitosis. It is what goes on between mitosis. So that's your G1, S, and G2 are part of interphase. The first phase of mitosis is prophase. During prophase, the DNA will condense, which means all of those little strings of DNA that are currently being read will go condense into those chromosomes. So we can see this when the chromosomes become this big squi those squiggles there, as opposed to the nebulous blue mass in interphase, and that is in the nucleus. During prometaphase, the mitotic spindle will bind to the chromosomes and begin to move them towards the center. Now, what happens here as well is the nuclear envelope will break down, which allows those chromosomes to travel outside of the nucleus. Well, the nucleus is no more. Then we have metaphase. This is where the mitotic spindle will line up all of the chromosomes along the metaphase plate. Then we have anaphase. Anaphase is where the individual chromosomes will separate. So what happens is the mitotic spindle will bind to each of the different sister chromatids and then will pull them apart. So we remember this by Anna and her sister separate. So Anna and her sister separate during anaphase. They start pulling to get apart and they just let it go and they separate. They separate and they travel to all alternate ends of the cell. And then this is called telophase when they form into two new nuclei each on the opposite end of the cell. So that is telophase, and that is at the end of mitosis. Following telophase, or sometimes at pretty much the same time, comes another process called cytokinesis, which is separate from mitosis because it represents the division of the cell's cytoplasm, not the nuclear material. Remember, mitosis is the division of the chromosomes. Telophase is the end of mitosis. Cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. So in class, we're going to draw it ourselves, list and define each phase of mitosis, and draw pictures of the cells in each phase. I would highly recommend you do this on your own because it's a good exercise. Also in class, we may cover mitotic spindle, and we may cover a little bit more. It's just pretty cool pictures, really.